mom in tears after being forced to mention one problem per appointment. Well, this is a sort of um, what we call inflammatory clickbait articles that are meant to pit doctors against patients and vice versa. So let's look at this story. So this mom goes to a GP surgery in Greater Manchester. You know, she, you know, she has different problems or different symptoms that she wants to mention to her doctor. And the doctor basically says, no, I want you to mention one symptom or one problem per appointment because this is for your own patient safety. And obviously for the doctor as well, because the doctor is obviously feels that in the time I've been given to sort out your problem, 10 minutes is allocated. If we start talking about your other problem, I don't know how long that's going to take. That might take two minutes. That might take five minutes. That might take another 10 minutes. I've got a busy surgery. I've got 20 other patients waiting. Who knows? The doctor is probably running late as well. You're running behind, you know, in his um, surgery appointments. The receptionists have probably made a call to the doctor like this other patient has been waiting for 20 minutes and is angry because the patient has to go and pay more money for his parking or her parking or you know, the, the patient's Uber is waiting outside and, you know, there is money, you know, time is money. So there are different factors to consider here. And I'm just going to look at both sides of the coin. So I'm going to look at the patient side of the coin, first of all. So obviously you're a patient. Um, you've been waiting a few weeks to see the doctor. And while you've been waiting a few weeks, you initially you might have had one problem, but while you've been waiting a few weeks, other new problems have started cropping up. So by the time you've had that six week wait to see the doctor, you've gone from one problem to five problems. And it's not like you've deliberately parked the five problems to come and see the doctor, I assume, but that's just the case. And what you're worried about is, okay, I do understand that the surgery policy is one problem per appointment, However, bearing in mind that it's taking me six weeks to get this appointment and it could take me another six weeks to get another appointment for that one problem, another six weeks for that other one problem, another six weeks for the other one problem. So we're talking 30 weeks to discuss all five problems on average. As you know, a typical GP wait for a face-to-face -face appointment in the UK can be anything from two weeks to six weeks. It just depends on the surgery, depending on the number of doctors available, depending on the number of appointments available as well. So this is the patient's concern. I've got five problems and these problems are affecting me daily. So I cannot afford to wait another six weeks to discuss this problem because I want it sorted now. It could be anything. It could be diarrhea. It could be constipation. It could be anxiety. You know, it could be um, chest pain. So we'll talk about that in a second because, again, the problem depends on whether it can actually wait to be seen within six weeks. So here is a patient like I've got these five problems I want to talk about. And this doctor is telling me one problem per appointment. But what if these problems are all linked? OK, what if my constipation is linked to my tummy pain and my tummy pain is linked to my headaches? I mean, as a patient, you don't know what's linked to what because you're not a doctor. In your mind, you're thinking this could all be linked. And also these problems are causing you anxiety. You're quite anxious because in your mind, you could be thinking, could this be cancer? Could this be something serious? And imagine a doctor is waiting is telling you that you should wait, you should go and book another appointment because there's one problem per appointment and you're worried that I could have cancer here because you just had a friend who just had cancer or you just had a relative who just had cancer. So a lot of things are going through your mind and you're not thinking, oh, this doctor is busy or this doctor has got five other patients waiting to be seen. You're thinking of yourself. You know, you have to look after yourself, look after your interests. This is something that you feel needs to be addressed, needs to be sorted out. Do I need further investigations? Do I need blood tests? So I understand where the patient coming from. Doctors are patients too. As a doctor, I've been a patient myself, though I've never had five problems, but I understand the perspective of the patient because I can understand both sides of the coin. So I would say from the patient's point of view, the doctor should have at least said, okay, we do have one problem per appointment. However, can you tell me what this problem is? Because I need to know if this is something that we can deal with right now. Or is this something that I can personally book you an appointment for to be seen at so and so time? Because I believe that within this time frame, this is a problem that can be dealt with. So if it, if the patient came out and say, oh, doctor, I've got chest pain, then I would know it's not something that I can pack for another time. This is something that has to be dealt with today because we need to rule out a heart attack. Could well be anxiety, but we need to rule out a heart attack. We need to rule out, you know, anything to do with the heart when it comes to, you know, chest pains. So the doctor needs to know, not just say, 
Oh, one problem per appointment, patient. You need to know what a problem is, doctor, because it could be something serious. Chest pain, again, could be a blood clot. You know, if it's diarrhea, then that's something that and has been going on for five, six weeks. You need to know, is this something that could be cancer? I need to send you for an urgent, you know, stool test or colonoscopy or whether you feel is the right investigation. So that's the first thing you need to do. Find out what the problem is. Don't just say one problem per appointment. I'm sure the patient knows that one problem per appointment. But the patient does not feel they can wait. So as a doctor, you should be saying, tell me what the problem is and I'll see if it's something that I can deal with now. Or you can still deal with it now. Just say, look, I'm running late. You know, I understand that you have this problem. I've got five other patients waiting. Are you happy to wait till the end of my surgery, which hopefully should finish in the next hour? Or I can get you booked in to be seen later in the day by another of my colleagues or by myself if possible. So that is another way to play it. You know, or could it be something that can be dealt with over the telephone? So maybe if you go home, you know, why don't I give you a call later and we can discuss this problem further? So these are the possibilities that you can present to the patient in dealing with this problem. Another possibility is you speak to the receptionist and say, look, I understand that, you know, I've got all these patients waiting, this problem this patient's got with, could you possibly maybe move one of the patients, you know, to later in the afternoon? Or could you tell another of my colleagues to help me deal with one of these patients? But that's not possible if you're the only doctor in the surgery. So these are the other scenarios that present itself that I've mentioned. Now, let's look at it from the doctor's side. As I mentioned earlier, you're running late, you know, you're stressed, you know, you haven't even the, the patients that you've seen previously prior to this patient, you've not even fully dealt with because there's blood tests you need to order, there's investigations, there's referrals you need to do. Maybe you're running 30 minutes late. You know, the receptionist is coming across to you and saying, so-and-so is waiting, you know, they've been waiting half an hour for the appointment. And then you know your list is starting to pile up. And then this patient is starting to say, look, I've got other problems to deal with. So as a doctor, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of stressed or you might not be the type of doctor that can manage more than a few problems in one appointment. Who knows? So I don't know what to say as a patient because maybe as a patient, I would advise maybe coming with it right from the beginning you know, say, look, doctor, you know, I know you've got one problem to deal with, but I have actually got two other problems that I feel that are important or I need to mention them to you and just tell me if it's something that needs to be dealt with right now. Because the doctor can then be more relaxed and say, OK, now I know what to do. So maybe we can try and prioritize which is more. So tell me your problems. Oh, chest pain. OK, um, chest pain. You've got skin rash. OK, constipation. Right, chest pain is the most important. I think with the skin rash, you know, I can look at that quickly. That's not going to take more than two minutes. Oh, constipation. Okay, you've had it for how long? Okay, let's let's we can manage this easily for you. Three problems done. Ten minutes. Okay, chest pain, skin rash, constipation. Let's do that again. Tell me, how long have you had a chest pain for? Okay, how long does it last? Chest pain last for when it comes on? Does it come on at rest? Does it come on exercise? Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? Do you have any family history of any heart problems? Have you had chest pain before? Okay, so from that short history, you've already deduced that, okay, this is maybe something that possibly needs an ECG. It's something that needs a blood test to make sure it's not heart related. Okay, I think I need to send you to hospital for this. You've got a skin rash. Show me the skin rash. Okay, looks like eczema. I can give you a cream, steroid cream for that as well. That one's done. Constipation, how long have you had that for? Oh, you've had that for two weeks. Okay, you're straining, any blood in your poo? Okay, fine. He, here is some advice, eat more fruit, eat more fiber, exercise. If that doesn't help, you can take some over-the-counter laxatives like what we call lactulose. You know, why don't you come back again in the next couple of weeks? If the constipation doesn't get better, then we can address that further. Three problems done in 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes actually. The reason why I'm saying this is because I deal with this all the time. I know how to manage three problems or more in 10 minutes. I'm a pro because I've worked under pressure without breaks. But like I said, every doctor is different. And there are times where I've been, I mean, I've been like overrun myself where I've been like, look, I cannot deal with this right now. And that's when you're under stress. But if you catch a doctor on a good day, they can deal with your problem within that 10 minutes. So that one problem per appointment, you know, some surgeries do have that policy. I've worked with surgeries where they've had that notice on the door, big letters, one problem per appointment. And I do welcome that practice because if you're going to give us 10 minutes to each patient, 
You cannot manage depression in 10 minutes. Let be re- let's be realistic. You cannot manage a mental health problem in 10 minutes because if that patient is suicidal, that could be a 15-year-old patient who might be suicidal right there and then. You need the time to call the crisis team. You need to call the uh, mental health team. You might need to call the hospital for the mental, mental health doctor on call. That could take 30 minutes. You need to call the safeguarding team as well, child safeguarding team. That's 40 minutes waiting on the waiting on the phone. You've got another patient coming with chest pain. You know, you need to call it the, the, the um, what do you call it? The doctor on call in the hospital. You need to maybe even call the ambulance. You could be waiting 10 minutes just to call the ambulance. I have been in all these situations myself. And then you're running late for your clinic. Then the next patient who's got who's not aware of what's happened prior to that now says, oh, I've got three other problems to deal with. You're already stressed. So a lot of these things are not black and white. You know, I totally see both sides of the coin, but the media should stop trying to post all these inflammatory comments, which are aimed at making society to be riled up against the doctors and make it look like doctors cannot manage more than one problem per appointment, which is not totally true. You have to take each scenario differently as it comes. Okay, so I hope you've understood that. Hope it's all clear.